What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. On today's video, we're going to be discussing the Warhammer weapon talents and which ones are best for what situation. And if you like the video or find it helpful, make sure to hit that like button. Today's like goal is 50. Let's see if you guys can crush that. If you're new here, my name is JJ and I do live stream daily. So please consider subscribing with bell notifications on if you want to see more content like this or join us in the live stream. Last thing, I do have links to all of my gear below in the description. So if you're interested in checking that out, they are Amazon affiliate links. I do get a small kickback and it costs you nothing extra, just a way to support the channel. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So the Warhammer does really good damage. You can see here the light attack does 100% strike damage, heavy 130 and charged heavy 170. That is really high. And keep in mind, this does do strike damage. Some of the enemies those are good against are say undead that you are really going to do extra damage to them so this is good for some of those early dungeons and things like that so the warhammer scales with strength so you'll want to put your points into strength or even get equipment and buffs that give you strength so the juggernaut tree is going to be more for single target damage and your crowd crusher will be more for aoe and cc so the first skill in the juggernaut tree is the armor breaker now this is going to be really good versus high armor targets whether it's in pve or pvp it does really good damage it adds grit to the attack that way it cannot be stopped which is good it also grants the target rend reducing their damage absorption that way you can do more damage and then you can also upgrade it by doing 15 percent more damage against targets with full health so an overall good ability can be used in PvP, especially versus high armor targets. Next ability is the Mighty Gavel. It's an overhead attack that does a lot of damage, which is really good, but it does have a long animation. And as you upgrade the ability, you can do more damage to targets under 30% HP. You can increase the stamina damage, that way your target cannot dodge as much. Here you can increase your movement speed and allow you to catch up to people or even get away if you need a reset. And Justice for All, you can add a second attack that deals 200 weapon damage, which is a lot. Wrecking Ball is an ability that does 120% weapon damage and flattens the enemies around it. On a successful hit, players obtain Fortify, granting 20% damage resistance. This will be a good defensive. And then here, all targets within 1.5 meters of the target hit are also flattened. So you can also hit more people than just the target you're hitting. So Wrecking Ball can be a really good ability for PvP since it is a sort of crowd control. Now, going over some of the passive abilities in Juggernaut, we have Epitome of Bonk. So we can increase armor penetration by 10% for all Warhammer standard attacks, which is good versus high armored opponents, whether it's PvP or PvE. Here you can increase the damage of your heavy attacks for 4 seconds, which is great for PvP and PvE. And here your abilities can apply Exhaust, which slows the target's stamina regeneration by 15% for 5 seconds. That way they can't get away since they won't be able to roll as much. And then Hardened Steel adds Grit to Hammer Heavy Attacks, which will prevent it from being interrupted. And it also has a 20% damage reduction. On targets under 30% HP, increase damage done by Heavy Attacks by 15%. And it looks like there's two percentages there. It might be a little typo, 15%%. And then here we can have our heavy attacks reduce the cooldowns by 7%. This ability right here is really big for damage. So for one second after taking damage, you do 35% extra damage. That is huge. So overall, the Juggernaut passives pretty much increase your damage or even stamina damage. That way your targets cannot get away as easily. Also, remember Justice for All is only for Mighty Gavel. So if you're not running this ability, there's no point of going down this talent tree all the way to the end. Now, Mighty Gravel is a high damage ability, but it is kind of hard to get off in PvP since it's a long animation. So unless you can set it up with a stun or something else, uh, you may not want to run this. But if you find it easy to set up, then go ahead and try it. So under the Crowd Crusher tree, we have Clear Out, which is a wide swing that knocks enemies back and does a small amount of damage. So this is good if you're trying to get enemies off of you or if you want to spread the enemies out for whatever reason. But for the most part in this, you want, you're want you doing AOE damage, so you want the enemies close together. So you're not really going to want to do this all the time. You could also buff this ability and get a 10% defense bonus for 4 seconds for all friendlies within 6 meters. That would be good for like a war. The cooldowns reduce per person hit. This is awesome, so you can do it more often. And here, when you use it on a target, you get increased movement speed for three seconds, which would be good for PvP. So this would be a good ability for like a war. Here we have Shockwave, which is an AoE stun. 
in a three meter radius and it does a small amount of damage but the targets are stunned for two seconds which allows you to land big abilities and if you're a tank you can add a gem in there so that way you can taunt enemies for six seconds you can buff the ability by decreasing the damage dealt from the target's attacks by 10% for 10 seconds. That would be good for PvP and PvE. And then you can expand the effective range of the shockwave to a 4 meter radius, which is good for PvE and PvP. Then we have Path of Destiny, which does a ground strike that erupts a linear wave of energy in front of you. It does a small amount of damage, but it's great for those people that are trying to run away or if you want to hit someone from a distance. It does have a pretty good range as far as the path that it creates then you can buff the ability to stagger all targets in its path which would be great for pvp that way the targets become easier to hit since they're not as mobile and then you can reduce the cooldown so you can do this ability more often once again great for pvp so for the passive abilities we have outnumbered which increases damage absorption if surrounded by two or more enemies within three meters of the player so this would be good for like a war or for pve dungeons um this is going to be more if you want to go tanky, but if you have a healer and you're looking to do damage, this probably isn't for you. And then here, reduce stamina consumption by 30% when blocking melee attacks. This will be great, once again, if you want to be tanky, doing a lot of blocking, and have a lot of stamina to keep blocking. This could be if you're in PvP in a war and you want to take less damage from everyone and be a little more tanky, that'd be great for that or for PVE if you are a tank. Here we can reduce damage taken by 10% while sprinting. So if you're trying to get away from a person, that'd be great. Although if someone's hitting you from behind as you're running away, you are going to be getting crit. So I guess 10% less crit is good for you in PVP or PVE. And then here, if you want to reduce the cooldowns, once again, that'll be good for PVP or PVE since you want more cooldowns to do more damage throughout every fight. And then here you can increase your movement speed after hitting a target with an active debuff. So this would be great for PvP so you can be more mobile and catch your enemy as they're trying to run away. 15% damage against targets affected by Warhammer debuffs. Great for PvE and PvP. Of course more damage. Regain 35% of damage dealt as health when using a Crowd Crusher ability. This will be great if you don't have a healer in PvP or PvE. This will be good if you're out questing on your own or dueling or something like that with no healer. You can definitely use this, but if you have a healer, you won't need this. After two light attacks with the Warhammer, debuff durations on player are reduced by 25%. This will be good for wars since a lot of people are going to be using debuffs on you. And if you're constantly using your light attacks, it'll reduce all of those. So definitely for that, definitely for some dungeons, it'll be good for both of those. And then the final ability after shock, whenever a target is affected by a crowd control effect, they're slowed by 20% for four seconds. This is going to be great for PVP. Now, as far as armor, you're going to want to go with medium or heavy. That way your crowd controls are lasting a little longer. You are going to be within melee range, so you are going to be taking a lot of damage also. So you want the medium to heavy to keep you alive longer because if you are dead, you're not doing any damage. Now, some other great weapons to pair this with are other ones that scale with strength i like the axe because the axe has a lot of mobility a lot of ways to pull the target towards you or for you to charge towards the target another one that a lot of people like to go is the hatchet with this and the hatchet is pretty good for run speed um they don't have a gap closer but they do move pretty fast and that's why a lot of people run it and for of course the last talent that prevents you from dying which is good for pve and pvp now here are the talents i'm currently running and keep in mind i am questing alone with pvp on that's why i have some abilities that are helping me with regaining health um moving faster so that in those pvp situations i could either catch the target or get away to reset and also heal myself since i don't have a healer well guys if you found this video helpful please make sure to hit that like button and share with someone that may find it beneficial subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks